Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Rhone Invasion by Bonjour Games. This is a one to two player board game that takes 45 to 95 minutes and it's for ages 14 and up. And in the game Rhone, you are playing a 1v1 competitive dice chucking card layout type game or you can play the, com the cooperative version of the game where you're gonna fight against the invasion itself. This game is all about managing your tableau, rolling dice, customizing those dice, and attempting to gather as many resources as you can to play cards from your deck. Not only that, but the game is also going to be a deck builder. As you train cards, you'll add them to discard pile, and you're gonna reshuffle, which is basically something that's going to kind of hurt you in the long run when you have to do that. Uh, then you can utilize the new cards in your deck to be played out and utilize them to defeat your opponent. The objective is to get your opponent's HP to zero, and if you you can do that before they do that to you, you'll win. Or if you're gonna play the competitive version, there's different scenarios you can take place in, fighting against the invasion as you or up to one other player fights against the invasion, which is gonna use an extra player board, and you'll attempt to defeat them before they defeat you. This game is going to have a lot to talk about, so let's go ahead and get into it. We'll start with the setup, we'll then go on to the how to play, and finally my review. So we're going to specifically talk about the 1v1 competitive variant for the game. Uh, but there is an extra variant, and I'm sure there's going to be another video that covers it, which will be a link down below. You can check out their Kickstarter campaign and all the rest of the stuff they do. But in this 1v1 scenario, what's going to happen is each player is going to get a player board. Then they're going to take each uh, of the screws, I believe it's the blue and the green one, for uh, their armor and health. In my case, I'm using the green and red, and place it on 16 and 14. Each player is also going to get a 10 slash 11 card deck, which is explained in the rules that you're going to take all those cards, shuffle them, and then place them on their deck space right in front of you. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to get to train four cards. You'll basically be taking cards from this main deck here. You'll draw a certain number of them, three of them. You'll choose one and put it face up in front of you. And those cards, as you train them, you put screws on them. You'll be able to utilize them by putting them into your discard, which will then get shuffled into your deck, creating kind of a deck for builder. You're going to get one leader. You'll take one leader from the leader pile, and you're going to take one of these technologies, and you're going to place it over here as well. And these are cards that you can utilize on your turn that will give you an ability. And in most cases, they're going to be tapped on your turn. You'll utilize them, and then whenever your opponent reshuffles their deck, you're going to get to untap them so that you can utilize them again. Take four dice. They're going to be pre-set up dice with every side having one color and one side having no colors. And each player is going to get four of those. All the rest of the screws, the screwdriver, and the tokens will be set aside along with the main deck, the starter deck, the extra heroes, and the extra techs. After that, you're ready to begin the game. Now, when you're playing the 1v1 competitive mode, if you're going second, you're going to be getting two of these spare parts that you can use before the game begins. So I can spend them to either A, gain screws to place onto my training units, or I can spend both of them to recruit a new card. Uh, and you can only have a certain number of cards in front of you at any given time. And in this case, I'm just gonna spend these two to get two screws, it doesn't really matter what color. Whenever you're placing a screw on one of the cards in front of you that is being trained, you're just gonna take any color, because it doesn't matter. You can place them on any of the cards that you want. And then you're ready to basically begin the game. The starting player is going to begin, and there's a nice little explanation here in the rules. I wish they had a player aid somewhere, um, but they do have certain player aids, just not for this. Uh, they're going to start by doing the beginning of turn. So basically any cards that trigger a beginning of turn effect are going to take place. Maybe it might be a tech or a hero. Maybe it might be a card in your hand. Otherwise, you move on to the next phase of the game, which is to draw. Now, this deck here should be shuffled. This is your starting deck, should have 11 cards in it. When you're playing the competitive mode of the game, it's going to tell you to include not only with the base kit of the 10, but also the defending squad card into your deck. And then you'll shuffle it up and you'll draw cards and you can draw as many as you want. So if I want, I can go, I want this one, I want this one, I want this one, I want this one. I can keep going throughout in the entire deck if I'd like. But there's a penalty for that. So I'm going to actually just draw a certain number of cards. I'll draw one, I'll draw two, and I'll stop here actually based on the cards that I got. After I've drawn, I've pushed my luck, I'm then going to be able to roll my die. Now I get four die at all times. And I'm going to roll these die, and whenever I roll them, they're going to give me certain sides. So in this instance here, I've gotten a black, a blue, a red, and a yellow. And that is going to allow me to utilize those as resources. After I roll, there's my main phase. And on your main phase, you can use a die to collect a resource. So I can say I'm gonna collect this as a blue resource, this as a red, this as a black, and this as a yellow. 
Um, another thing I can do is I can transform any two die into one color of my choice. I need a green, sadly, so I'm gonna have to spend this red and this yellow, and I'm gonna place them there, indicating a green, they'll get be gone, and I'll add a green screw that I can utilize as a resource for this turn. So now I have a green, a black, and a blue. I can also play cards. I can play cards from my hand. Now, in the top left corner of every card, there's going to be a cost to that card. If it is a blank with a question mark, that's wild. But if it's a color, it's going to require a specific colored pip from your die. So, for instance, if I were to play Commander Adis, um, you're going to need two of any specific color. Now, it can't be blank, but it can be any color you want. So, I could use this black and this blue and play him. And if I did, I would gain his effects. In which case, this is going to do a certain number of damage, and I'm going to get a screw that I can place on a card. Or, otherwise, I could play a Demolisher. Now, a Demolisher requires a green, which is why I spent those two dice, and it requires one of any color, so I could spend this blue here. If I spend them, they're going to go away, and I play the card. It lets me do two damage to an opponent. Damage is always going to be hitting the opponent's shield first. If the opponent has no shield, it will go on to the HP, and then I will gain a shield. And I will increase my shield marker to the maximum of 18. In this case, it's going from 16 to 17. And finally, I gain an HP, moving from 14 to 15. Any cards that you play that you've spent resources on will go to your discard pile. Next, uh, I can also use a card's ability. So in this case, I could use my hero, and it has this little tap or turn signal symbol. It says whenever my opponent reinforces his or her deck, which is basically reshuffling your discard and your garbage pile into your library, I can untap this. Um, I can also tap this guy to put the top card of my opponent's deck into their garbage. So in this case, if I turn this guy to the side, I would take the opponent's disc top card of their deck and place it into their garbage dump. The next thing I could do is I could also tap a tech. So in this case, I can recycle two cards. Recycling cards is pretty simple. Any cards in your hand or in your garbage dump can then be put back on top of your deck. And there's a reason for that. In this case, I'll just put this one card back on top because I'm not actually able to play it. And I can also use stored resources. In the game, there's going to be resources that you're going to get from when you roll these die that you'll be able to place down onto this field here. Now, in this case here, I've run out of cards to play. I've put the card back from my hand onto the top of the field, the top of the deck, because I can't afford it. And so I'm left with this one die here. Well, I'll spend this die. It's a black. And actually, I'll take out a black screw. And I'm going to place this black screw into my stored resources. Now, I can place it in the black area or in the wild area. And when I have placed two of the exact same color in one of the fields here, on my turn, as long as I have those two, I can spend those two to get one of that color and the bonus ability that it provides here. In the case of a wild, it can be any two resources. It just has to be resources. I'll gain um, a wild symbol, which is not a symbol that lets you choose any color. It's just a symbol that will let you use for a wild. So in this case, it would be this little question mark thing here. And I would gain the ability, which is to gain two screws or destroy a card in your hand. Um, then after that, I've stored my resources. I'm going to use any spare parts I have. Now, when you play cards, there's going to be this spare part symbol, the very bottom middle. And for each card that you play that has one, you're going to gain a spare part. So let's go ahead and say that I played, I don't know, three cards and they each had one spare part on them. I would get three spare parts. In this case, I only spent enough resources to play one card, but we'll just say I have extra so I can explain how this works. I can now spend these resources to use my abilities here. The first one is I can spend one to get one screw and place it on one of my cards. So if I spend one, I can put one of these screws on there. When I place screws down on cards, there's a number and a screw symbol on the bottom uh, right hand side. In this case, it says four and screw. Whenever you reach that requirement with screws, this card is going to go into your discard pile, which will allow you to utilize it the next time that you re reshuffle your deck and a discard and graveyard back in together. So that is why you're going to be getting, and there's certain cards that will give you screws that you'll place on these guys. I could spend two tokens to recruit a card. When you recruit a card, you'll take three cards from this deck here, you'll choose one, put it out onto your playing field, and then you'll discard or destroy the other two. Whenever you recruit a new card, so for instance, let's just say I recruited this card here, you would place it down in front of your field, and you'd get a screw, and you would place it on it whenever it says to do so. And in this case, for spare parts, it will always let you do that. The next thing is at the end of your turn, you can replace a screw in one of your dice with a screw of a different color. So in this case here, let's say that I had this die here and I wanted to 
give more value to it. I can get rid of this blank screw. I can then put in this new one here. So whenever I roll this die, whenever I roll this side, it's going to give me a blue and a green pip, which is gonna give me two resources instead of one. So you can upgrade and improve your dice as the game goes on. Another thing you do is spend four of these guys to take a card from the starting cards, which is going to basically be giving you these water boxes, which are very, very powerful, and put it into my discard pile. And finally, I can discover another technology. I can take a tech card and I can add it to my stack of tech cards. And these are going to allow me to use more abilities whenever my opponents reshuffle their library. So they're powerful abilities that are going to be very beneficial for you throughout the game. But remember, it's going to cost six. After I have done this, uh, any cards that have uh, had all their screws on, so in this case, if this guy had two screws and this guy had four screws, they're gonna go away from my training area and they're gonna be put into my discard pile, meaning they've been trained and they're ready for use whenever I reshuffle my deck. And then at the end of my turn, I'm just gonna, so it's a big, similar to the beginning of the turn, basically all card effects will trigger at the end and the player executes all the effects that they say. So anything that says at end of turn, you'll do so. Uh, another thing to note too is whenever your deck is depleted, you're going to have to reshuffle it. And there's a certain number of steps where you'll have to go through. The first thing is for each card in your base, you'll take the top card from your garbage dump, which is gonna be on this side over here. There's reasons why cards will go into your garbage dump. Um, and you will put it on top of your discard pile and you'll lose an armor for each one. So if I had two cards in my garbage dump, I would lose two armor. If I had, let's say that I had more cards left over in my garbage dump after the amount has been removed from here, um, two cards, then I'm gonna lose actual HP for each one left over. So if I had three more, I would actually lose three HP. Uh, then my opponent is gonna gain one tech token, which are these guys here that they can utilize throughout their turns and they kind of stay with them. And finally, uh, you, I'll be able to reinforce my deck. I'll take all the cards that are in my discard pile and I'll go ahead and add them to my deck. I'll shuffle up once again, and it's ready to go. So whenever your deck is depleted, you'll basically be taking cards from your garbage area, putting them back into your discard, and you'll lose your armor based on the card you have here, and then you'll lose HP based on whatever is left over. Shuffle your cards, and then you can keep drawing. No big deal. <laughs> it's just there's a cost to how you play the cards and as you dump them. So not only are your opponents going to hurt you, but also the cards that get put into the dump are going to hurt you as well. And there's ways that that happens. And the main way is when you draw too many cards, you can only use a certain number of them based on your resources. The rest of them will go into your garbage pile, which is a way in which you're gonna be taking damage if you're not too careful and you push your luck too well. That's basically the game. After you've went through those phases, you pass. So basically, beginning of turn, those effects, then you're gonna go ahead and draw cards until you don't want to draw anymore. Then you'll roll your dice, hopefully modified heavily, <laughs> and then you'll gain any resources from there. Your main phase is going to start. You'll utilize your dice as best as you can to either put them in your storage area, play the cards from your hand. Um, you'll be able to turn them into a, specifically a wild. You'll be playing these cards, gaining spare parts, utilizing those spare parts to give you benefits, whether it be tech cards or bonus dice, etc., etc., And then after that, you're gonna train any cards that have screws on them. Remember, screws are only important as to the color in this little stored resource area, but as for it being on your trained cards, all that matters is that you have enough screw, screws on there at the end of the turn to be able to remove them and put them into your discard pile that give you a sort of benefit throughout the game. And that's how you play the game Roan. Now, of course, there is a cooperative version where you're gonna play against the invasion, which is gonna have its own unique invasion deck and scenarios, and it kind of looks like this. And you'll have to be dealing with this throughout the game, but I'm sure you'll find information about that somewhere else. Cause I really wanna just gush, I mean, talk about this game as it stands. Let's get into the review. So with most of my review portions, I kind of do this compliment sandwich thing and I kind of explain who the game is for. I'll be like, good, bad, good, bad, good. This is the game, is it for you? Uh, in this case, uh, I'm very, very particular to games like this. Now, I'm not a huge fan, however, of two-player games that much, but this is a huge exception to that rule. Roan is an excellent game. This game is easily getting my seal of approval even before I start explaining why. <laughs> hey, so this game is a deck builder, which I love. I love deck builders. I like the idea of it going to the discard pile and or the garbage dump. If you push your luck too much, if you can't afford something, it's going to cost you. 
I love the ability to customize your die. You're gonna be adding additional pips to these guys, increasing your odds of getting better rolls, but at the cost of not being able to train cards as well, not being able to utilize better cards because all the cards in this big deck here are gonna be better than these ones for the most part. And also, it also helps with the more cards you have here, the less you'll have to reshuffle, the less your opponent's abilities don't refresh, and of course, the less time you're gonna be taking damage from your garbage dump and reshuffling and giving your opponent some type of advantage. So there's kind of this double-edged sword to almost everything that you do. And nothing is wasted in this game. If you can't utilize something, you're going to be able to store it. If there's a certain item or like spare parts, you can save at the end of your turn and dump everything out on a big one. But you have to get rid of all of them on that turn. You can't keep hoarding and hoarding these spare parts. You have to utilize them, which keeps a nice balance in the game. Where at best, you're going to get a discover a new technology. And at worst, you're going to get one single screw. But it all helps. Having you customize your deck to allow you to utilize certain colors and Pips is also going to help you be able to customize your die to the best of your ability based on what the deck holds. Now, in my case, the first game I played, I actually had a lot of red and a lot of yellow, so I dumped a lot of red and yellow. But you have to remember your starting deck, and it has a lot of all the different colors in it, and you're going to have to kind of account for that. And because I had a lot of specific colors that I wanted to use, whenever I came into these starter deck cards, it hurt me. And so I have to kind of realize you have to kind of do a little bit of everything as best as you can, or suffer the consequences and choose to use the best possible pips you can for the cards that you get, which is going to give you a lot of power. This game has a ton to offer. Do you love dice customization? Now this says it's the first game where you screw the dice before they screw you. Not necessarily true. There is a game called Kapow that I played quite a bit where you're basically just chucking dice back and forth like a Yahtzee type of a game, but you kind of improve the Yahtzee as you improve the dice, which has the exact same form and function as these guys here. However, these ones probably have a better way of dealing with them. Now, that being said, it's still funky. It's still finicky. You're going to have to use some type of screwdriver or some type of machine. I imagine there's gonna be like a little plastic thing that you'll have that you can unscrew them. It's not too long or too difficult. And most of the time when you're doing this, your turn's basically over. So your opponent can just basically start going. So there's not a whole lot of downtime. Regardless though, I love dice customization and it has deck customization, which makes this game on the upper echelons of games I enjoy. I love training cards. I like making my own specific deck, but there is a process to how you do it. You don't just simply buy a card. You have to actually get that card, start placing screws on it, and utilize that card's um, uh, screw requirements up until you get it to its full potential. Then it goes to your deck and you can use it. Some cards are free, which is awesome. They might cost a little bit more though. Like in this case, this is a six screw card, but it's free and it says S store all rolled resources from one of my die and then re-roll it. So if I rolled my fancy blue green here, I would then get to store those resources here and re-roll this die and gain even more resources. Maybe another blue green. Um, it it's great. The artwork is fantastic in this game. It looks really, really, really well done. The graphic design is excellent. The quality of all the components, and this is a prototype, are excellent. This is a game I would instantly back. I'm not a big backer on campaigns because I have so many I review, but this one would definitely be an exception to that. One small other gripe other than just it takes a little bit to do the dice is it's only two players. I really, really wish this played four. I think it would be excellent at four, being able to basically choose who I want to hit, maybe even a team mode. I feel like it's all possible. Maybe even if you just bought two copies of the game, I don't see why you couldn't do it, but maybe there's something I'm missing. But I really like the idea of having even more players to this, but just playing the two, on, uh, two player head on head was really, really fun. I am enamored by this game. I love using the powers of the leaders and the techs and the dice and the cards and training them. There's just a lot to offer with Roan and they took a lot of time to make it so that this is going to be fun. Not all cards are fair, but they have a cost to them. And if you hit them, then you're going to be able to use their abilities and you have to decide what's best for you in each and every play. And the last thing I gotta say is at the end of every game, you'll have to remove any of the pips that you've gained from your dice to reset it for the next player. It's just another little thing that kind of, you know, it, it's mechanical and that's always not the greatest, but I, 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 I enjoy this game. It was worth it. <laughs> Setting this game up and playing uh, with Alicia, who had never played a dice builder or really a deck builder this type before, and she loved it, just goes to show how wonderful this game is. If you want to pick up Run on Kickstarter, I strongly recommend you do so if any of this sounds like fun to you, because I had a blast.
Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Roan Invasion. If you're interested in picking up this game, there's a link down below in the description currently on Kickstarter. You can also go ahead and check us out at unfilteredgamer.com. Blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. A live stream every Wednesday and Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST on Twitch. If you're interested in joining us on there, go ahead and take a look. Check it out. We do giveaways as well sometimes. And of course, our newest game coming out soon, Zero Day on Kickstarter. That's going to be a fun one versus many, but the many aren't working against just the one. They're working against each other as well. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. Definitely pick up Roan, and I look forward to uh, defeating you uh, or helping you against the invasion next time.